From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special Cube Conversation. Digging into some of the hottest topics in tech, of course, multi cloud has been one of the big things we've been talking about uh, for a number of years the maturation from just cloud in general, hybrid cloud, and multi cloud. Happy to welcome back to the program one of our Cube alumni. Chandomai Mandel, he is a Director of Marketing from Dell Technologies. Chandomai, pleasure to see you. Happy to be here. All right, so uh, last year uh, we were together for Dell Technologies World, VMworld, and of course, have seen how these solutions have been expanding out uh, partnerships, especially a lot of it from Dell's side, uh, leveraging VMware technologies to extend and connect um, to what your customers are doing uh, with their cloud strategies. So. Give us the update as to you know, what you're hearing from customers and how Dell is moving to meet them. Sure, cloud adoption is really growing. And even from the three hyperscalers, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, there are over 500 different services today. And with this fast pace of innovation, I see customers adopting uh, many different services from these public cloud vendors. And again, they want to adapt these services because they are differentiated. They have workloads that can leverage the services and sometimes even from like the, leveraging the same data set. Uh, one challenge that we are seeing is how do customers move data around from one cloud to another so that they can take advantage of the great innovation that is happening with cloud storage uh, or cloud provider. Because moving the data comes with not only the migration risk, but also huge egress fees, the time it takes. So solving this customer challenge is our number one priority in the cloud offering. Great, Chenamai, you brought up a bunch of really good points there. Of, of course, uh, nobody solved the speed of light issue, uh, so we know data has gravity, it's not easy to move it. And yeah, absolutely, you know, I, I, you know I've been saying for the last couple of years uh, that data is one of those flywheels when it comes to the cloud. But once you've got it in there, uh, it's not you know, kind of the traditional lock-in, but I have access to the data, I have access to the services, and it's not easy to move it out, even if customers would want to take advantage of multiple services from multiple clouds. So uh, I'd love to hear, you know, wh what's, what's Dell's role in this discussion? How are you helping us make our data uh, more of a multi-cloud enabled uh, environment? Absolutely, absolutely, Stu. Uh, so with us, Dell Technologies Cloud Storage for Multi-Cloud, uh, we are delivering scalable, resilient cloud attached storage with flexible multi-cloud access options, ideal for uh, securely deploying or moving demanding applications to the cloud for, uh, for many different use cases. The way we are doing it, uh, effectively, that customers can leverage block or file storage consumed as a service directly from many different uh, clouds like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and we are providing very high speed, low latency connections from Dell EMC storage from a managed service provider location uh, using the direct Cloud Connect option. And let me give you like an example. Uh, we have Dell EMC Isilon Industries number one scale out NAS, it has a uh, very high performance, drives large throughput, uh, scales to multi-petabyte use cases, uh, have multiple different protocol access simultaneously from many different applications. Now, the same Isilon today can be leveraged as Dell Technologies Cloud Storage with direct access to uh, Azure, Google Cloud, AWS, consumed in the cloud operating model. So now you can run your applications in any cloud while having data uh, sitting outside of your cloud with the specific, uh, with the high performance, high speed access that you need. 
that's where we are bringing the innovation and the value. Okay, and if, if I heard you right, Chandamai, uh, this is a, a managed service solution because if I want that you know, high speed, uh, you know, direct connection uh, with, with, with Azure and with AWS, normally I need to be you know, in some service provider. Uh, Dell, of course, has lots of partners that offer those services. I'm not just talking about you know, connecting my array that I have in my data center connected over the internet um, because that wouldn't necessarily give me uh, the bandwidth and performance that, that I need. Did I get that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Because again, uh, you need this connection and co-location with the hyperscalers to get the high speed uh, connection, say in the case of Microsoft Azure, the express route, uh, you need to be uh, co-located in a facility like right next to them so that you have the high bandwidth, high performance that you need for this application. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, uh, you're hyperscale adjacent. Uh, you just throw that connection, it's relatively close. Uh, might help if maybe if you've got, you know, a customer, an industry example of, you know, what the, the real life expectation and use case is uh, for a solution like this. Uh, sure, so let me give you the example of uh, genomic analysis. Now, this genome sequencer, in a single cycle for a human being that like, creates 100 gigabytes of data, and that's just like raw data. You need to run analysis, uh, different types of analysis to the effects uh, that is that are drug or something having on the DNA. Now, uh, for example, uh, NVIDIA Parabricks is a popular sequencing software that needs to be run on this data set. And again, it drives very high throughput. Sometimes it needs uh, 100 gigabits per second throughput uh, to uh, drive the performance. Now, we have worked with Microsoft Azure uh, very closely and using Microsoft Express Route, you can actually get that bandwidth, that throughput uh, for running uh, Parabricks uh, next-gen sequencing uh, VMs in Azure uh, leveraging Isilon. And in fact, uh, we have worked with Azure to provide a uh, completely egress fee data movement so when this application is writing back data uh, to this application array, uh, to, the, uh, to the array as part of their technology cloud storage, there is zero fee associated with it. And it's not just Microsoft Azure, right? You can have the same data set uh, uh, and run this Parabrick or uh, next-gen sequencing VMs in Google Cloud, AWS, Azure simultaneously, thereby scaling uh, up this process much faster. So if you are a pharmaceutical company uh, trying to cure for a disease spreading across the globe, you need to run uh, this on hundreds or thousands of patients creating hundreds of uh, terabytes to petabytes of data, then you can actually scale up the process across three or more different clouds uh, very quickly. This truly shows you how you can leverage uh, the power of Isilon, the scalable high performance storage in a multi-cloud world. Yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, you know, you, you talked about uh, no cost for egress fee and that, you know, can be one of those architectural killers. You think you have a good solution for a cloud, you put things out and then all of a sudden you start getting things on your bill that you weren't expecting. Um, so did, did I, is there something special that the customer needs to do that, that it's for this service? Is that, that you're saying, is that a partnership with Dell and Microsoft or you know, how does this differ from kind of the traditional eager fees that, that I'm used to getting for whether I'm using AWS Azure or Google? So this is like a Dell and Microsoft Azure partnership. partnership. So that's where like you do not get uh, charged with the uh, egress fee when the applications running in Azure are uh, connecting back to uh, Dell EMC storage as part of the cloud storage services. Okay, excellent. Because yeah, I mean, Chanamai, I'm, I'm sure you're well familiar. Uh, a lot of times people look at cloud and they're said, okay, when I look at the economic, if it's compute intensive, it makes a little bit more sense. If it's data intensive, there's lots of reasons that it might not make sense. So this is unlocking uh -huh. some of that data capabilities. I guess that leads to you know, some of the opportunity around AI is of course, I, I need to think about my architecture. A lot of times data is not going to leave the edge environments. You know, autonomous vehicles is you know, an obvious use case that we talk about. Usually there's training 
in a central location, but then I need to be able to actually do the work at the edge. So uh, what does this, you know, cloud storage for multi-cloud, how does AI fit into this whole discussion? So yes, for AI, you need to train very large data sets uh, for a long time and to get to uh, the results like you opt in or you want. Uh, you gave the example of autonomous driving, right? Uh, the self-driving car need to understand many different scenarios, uh, whether it's a icy road, a kid on the road, it's a slippery uh, uh, condition, or they are running into a brick wall, so on and so forth. Now, when it comes to uh, dealing with this petabytes worth of our uh, data set, and you need to train these models, okay? You need a uh, very uh, specific servers, GPU powered servers. Okay. Now, to scale, you think that you'd go to the cloud and then you will be able to get the computer need. However, it turns out cloud is not an amorphous, homogeneous place. Uh, between the vendors, there is huge difference in terms of what GPU powered server you can get. And even like within one particular cloud vendor, depending on the region, uh, this vary widely. So it becomes critical that uh, you can have like data set uh, that can be connected from many different clouds, from many different regions as you need it. And one more thing I want to highlight, AI is actually one area where these cloud providers are providing very differentiated services. So in the autonomous vehicle example, there are several stages of uh, model training depending on like what you are trying to achieve at one point in time. Now, uh, you can one day or for one part of the process, you can leverage uh, AWS SageMaker uh, for your model training. On the other part, you probably would like a TensorFlow for, uh, from Google Cloud to do it. Now, when you have your data set outside of the cloud in you have the fast connection from many different clouds, you can take advantage not only uh, the different uh, GPU powered servers, but also differentiated software services that are available from these cloud providers. All right, so Chanamai, how does the, the VMware cloud solution fit into this discussion? Uh, I, I know it's been an a, a important piece of the Dell Technologies cloud piece. So how does the, the multi-cloud storage, uh, VMware cloud, and the multi-cloud piece fit together? Uh, sure, so VMware Cloud uh, on AWS is one of the key offering that uh, we have, and it also fits into the uh, multi-cloud story very well. Actually, let me explain that with a customer example. Okay? Uh, we have one of world's largest uh, energy company down in Texas. Uh, they have four petabyte uh, data lake uh, on Isolar, okay? And this is all seismic data. They are running analytics workloads to figure out exactly which place in the ocean they should drill. And our precision on here uh, can be like millions, uh, millions of dollars of difference. Now, they wanted to set up a secondary data center for in the case of a disaster. What we were able to do is to spin up a ER service for this customer leveraging Dell Technologies cloud storage. So they replicate the data to the cloud and then we spin up their ER environment with VMware cloud on AWS, okay? And now the data is already in the cloud. So they got their uh, ER service with VMware cloud on AWS, but with the same data set, now they are running those seismic, uh, 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 analytics workloads from uh, AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure, thereby speeding up the process of uh, finding the next location to drill. So you see the example where we leverage BMC on AWS for DR as a service, and since the data set is already there, now they are running their analytics workloads for uh, their regular operation. Great, well, definitely a, a, a quite a bit of maturation in the Dell cloud solution, how that fits into multi-cloud. Uh, you know, help put a point on it, uh, Chandamai, if you would. Uh, the, the conversations you're having with customers, 
and Dell's role in the multi-cloud discussion? Sure, so there are two important things. First, the ability to scale to many different clouds to leverage uh, the different surfaces, the compute infrastructure, so on and so forth. And the second part uh, of it is, depending on the applications, right? Uh, you might need to leverage uh, for the same workload, working on the same data set, different services from different providers. Dell Technologies Cloud Storage for Multi-Cloud is enabling that for our entire customer set. And I will uh, close out with one more important aspect. If you are the customer who is just starting your cloud journey, or uh, one single cloud provider solves your cloud needs for today, but still, you want to architect your solution so that when the need comes, uh, you can actually leverage multi-cloud for compute or other services. So if you decouple your services from like where your data is while doing the cloud access, that actually makes your cloud architecture future-proof. So with Dell Technologies Cloud Storage for multi-cloud, we are helping customers not only today, but also for future. All right, well, Chandamaya Mandal, thanks so much for the updates. Congratulations to the team on the process and look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you. All right, I'm Stu Miniman. Thank you so much for watching theCUBE.